Okay, so with the final episode of the season coming up really fast, I was re-watching some scenes of the show trying to get an understanding of what's going on in this town. And then I saw this scene of Victor and Tabitha. Eloisa, that's, that's one another the night the bad things happen. She went to the children locked in the tower. It really made me ask myself one question. When and how did Victor's sister tell him where their mother went? The only way that I can see that happening is if she told him about that after the massacre. But does that mean that Victor's sister also survived the massacre? That brings us back to one of the most interesting scenes in season 2. When Boyd goes to the clinic, he sees Father Katri once again after he's already dead. And this time, Katri tells him something really interesting. I'm proud of you though. I've never asked for help, never admit weakness. Point is, you did what you could, boy. You tried. Not every story got happy ending. Mine didn't, Bing Shen's didn't, Abby's didn't. Boyd is at the lowest point that he's ever been in, in Fromland, and he starts believing that he's losing his mind because nobody else can see the worms apart from him. Katri tells him that he's done everything he could, he tried his best, so now it's time for Boyd to give up his gloves and throw in the towel. And Boyd almost agrees with Katri. He really hammers to Boyd the point that he's simply losing his mind, just like the same the same thing that happened to Abby. He even tells Boyd to think up a better version of himself the next time. Not every story gets a happy ending. You did with good boy. You tried. You are still the worst fucking priest I've ever met. So maybe a man better version next time. When Boyd and Sarah got to the bottle tree, Boyd reaches for one of the bottles and he almost grabs it, but Sarah ends up having a massive reaction. I thought you said had been out this far before. Just uh Sure, that's a good idea. Later on, after Boyd's already set up a tent, Sarah tells Boyd that she had a voice telling her to tell Mr. Fish and Loaves that she was wrong. That there's things much worse than the monsters we're used to seeing out in the forest. This makes Sarah think it was a mistake to, for them to go out there and that they need to go back to the town. And I realized that these two scenes have something that connects both of them together. Both of them have the characters trying to get Boyd to give up, trying to get him to stop looking for answers. And then I asked myself, what if that wasn't actually Katri talking to Boyd? What if that wasn't Abby talking to Sarah? But if it wasn't them, then who else could it be? The entity. Huh. Let's say that the entity is going around manipulating people to prevent them from looking for answers. What could that mean for the story? How did Boyd get the worms in the first place? By meeting the old man in the dungeon right? But when Boyd meets Martin in the dungeon, he asks him a very simple question. Hey Martin, where you from? Uh, uh, small town, Elbrook. Where? Uh, 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 the way the old man answers the question is full of nervousness. It's almost like he himself doesn't know the answer because maybe he never prepared for the question. Mm. Each time that Boyd refuses to leave, Martin comes up with something new to try to get him to go back home to Fromville. I don't think I can get to town. Yeah, then I'll carry you. Keep us They won't be able to hurt you. You think those things out of the forest at night did this? They're just the tip of the spear. How about we change this up? Hey, Martin, where you from? <laughs> he tries telling Boyd over and over that there are worse monsters in the woods, but Boyd simply doesn't care. He just wants to get him free from the chains. And it's at that moment that the entity creates the music box because Boyd was refusing to leave the dungeon. He tries persuading Boyd that the box means supposedly worse monsters are coming, but that doesn't face Boyd. He still tr keeps trying to get him free. So what does he do? He brings up the one thing that's always affected Boyd, Ion Abbey. Never wonder if Abbey was right. No. Hey, what'd you say? What if it's all just a trick? What the fuck do you do? What if Abby was right implies to Boyd that Abby's solution is the correct answer. Kill the entire town. But logically, we know that can't be true because how many hundreds of thousands of people have died here yet Fromland is still active. Clearly, there's a lot more going on in this place. 
Martin wanted Boyd to give up his search for answers, just like the voice that talked to Sarah in the forest and Katri does at the clinic. But then, why is he so insistent on keeping the people in the town, even with all this power he clearly has as the entity? If I had to guess, his power isn't infinite, so the entity loses power each time he creates new monsters. You know, just an idea. I don't know for sure, I'm just saying. But this could be why he's manipulating the people into choosing to stay in the town. He has to have some sort of limit of influence, but I don't know for sure what is defining it. Whether it's that this world has multiple entities and each one has their own region, or if he built his own world but it's actually very small, hence why he has to loop the residents around the town. I'm not sure, but it could be that the lighthouse signifies the limit of his influence. So when Victor's mother got there, she either got sent to a different part of Fromville without any entity, or she got, or she got sent back home to the real world, to the normal world. Not the real world, but the normal world. Because think about how Boyd wound up in the dungeon in the first place. It was because the boy in white told Sarah that they need to go through the tree in order for them to be safe. If the boy in white and the old man were the same entity, then it would make sense. But it's hard to say for sure, because we have that scene where Bacta, where Bacta tells us that the boy in white told her to turn the bus around before she got to the town. It could also simply be that there is a real boy in white, but the entity pretends to be him from time to time, because he just likes manipulating people, I don't know. In the same way that he pretended to be Father Katri and he pretended to be Abby. Because when Katri first appears in season 2, the scene is literally him playing chess and he literally says, Your move, Boyd. It's your move, Boyd? Like I say, your options don't look great. I mean, <laughs> come on, man. look at that. If that was the entity all along, it's crazy to look back on that scene. Boyd tells him there's a boy in white sending people through magic trees and that he's got worms under his skin, but Katri just coincidentally dodges the question. Mystery boy sending people magic trees in the forest. My hand's not singing anymore, but now I got fucking worms underneath my skin. So yeah, yeah, maybe that's the part we should talk about. Or how about we talk about what's really on your mind? How exactly are you going to tell me that Sarah killed his dad? And that's because the entity who's pretending to be Father Katri doesn't want people looking for the answers. So when Boyd and Sarah reached the bottle tree in the woods, the entity starts hurting Sarah in an attempt to prevent Boyd from opening the bottles. Just like we see it affecting Sarah in the episode 10 preview, and trying to prevent them from going to the ruins of the dungeon. And notice how her nose bleeds in both instances. If the person who answered Jim's call was the entity all along, it did explain how the house collapsed because the entity was the one who did it. The reason Victor survived the colony house is because he was with the entity who was pretending to be the boy in white. And we saw that he has the power to stop the monsters when he pretended to be Abby in season 2. So that would make sense. The reason why we saw the boy in white so happy after the massacre in the flashback is because that wasn't actually the boy in white, it was the entity. And it got what it wanted, everybody dead, and now it's been fed and happy. It didn't mind Victor being alive because it knows Victor isn't going to look for answers. And he isn't going to look for answers because the entity has been manipulating him for decades using the images of the people he trusts. People like his sister, the boy in white, and probably his mother as well. The entity wants people to stay in the town. And that's why every time we see him, he tries to get Boyd to give up and to stop looking for answers. The entity is afraid of Boyd because Boyd is so stubborn and so fucking relentless. I'm proud of you though. Sheriff, I knew. Would have never asked for help. Never admitted weakness. You were the most stubborn asshole I have ever met. 